Hello there! <laughs> this is Lyra and I am so happy to talk with you today about the games that clients may play with you, you may be playing with your coaches, I think it's a fascinating topic and um, this video hopefully gonna help you to identify those games and what we have also what I really want you to do is to set uh, you on already on the sales calls um, the premise to not to play those games <laughs> and make sure when you're signing a client they know that that's not what is going to happen and I think it's gonna give your clients a lot of confidence in you it's gonna give your clients uh, you know a, a good very well needed way out of the game because guess what I will explain exactly why people play those games and why uh, like why would you be buying into it why would you be playing games it's all like we, we all have the tendencies now we're gonna look at um, how to get out of it so this training is going to be just as useful for you to get results with your coaches as it is would be useful for uh, you to get results for your clients and I propose like I said get this specific you know some specific instructions for your clients at the very beginning of they work together so this video I intend to um, also create for my clients right so they understand that's what's not going to happen in my program <laughs> right because of course like, I said, like we know, tendencies are there, so we want to not to do that, not to play those games. So, the game, uh, the inspiration for this training is coming from Eric Burns' Transactional Analysis book, which is called Games People Play, uh, People Who Play Games. Um, I've been talking about this forever, and uh, last time we tried out some interesting techniques, right, on, and methods on, on how to use that with your coaching clients, that this kind of method. But specifically today we're going to talk about, um, Eric Byrne had wrote a lot of descriptions on games that therapists specifically play. So if you put coach there, it, it's, you're going to have the same exact games pretty much. So you can have a good laugh while you're reading the book or when you're listening to me and say, oh my gosh, I totally know I've done it. I've totally, see, uh, like, I can recognize my clients doing it right now. It's really frustrating. Now I know why I feel so frustrated about working with them. I know why there is this kind of, some kind of like dissatisfaction and, ang you know, resentment, anger that sometimes comes up. Um, you will see why it's because you're not winning the game you see when you have this other feelings like I won but it's a kind of a dark darker side tomorrow by the way in a uh, in a Wednesday workshop group I will be talking about the darker side the shadow side of of a business of running a business and what kind of games we play with ourselves and the scripts we are running uh, when we are running a business and it's there's a part of us like within us there's a part that would really congratulate and, and win uh, and celebrate when we actually fail and it's really it's a dark side <laughs> and when we are often um, caught up in in that in that script or in that game we're not noticing and we, we, we don't understand why even though we are failing we also kind of feel content and we're not doing anything about it or when we are um, seeing our clients fail we also in the weirdest way get satisfaction from it so it's, it's this is uh this is why i would recommend of course you to read this it's not an easy read like you have to kind of sit here like really understand it's, it's like i i would say this is like very mathematical approach to psychology so you really have to see how it's how it's all connected but what i gave what i'm gonna give to you today is a kind of um summary of analyzing many different games putting it together in the context of what i teach to you all the time obviously i've been trained to insight in transactional uh, analysis 
you know, in my college trainings as a psychotherapist, and it was like the best ever. Like really, really, it's it's the basics of working with a client is when you, at the very beginning, you set up the premise of not playing games, of being an adult in the relationship, right? So it's very important. Now, the game we're going to discuss, the classic one, is called I'm Only Trying to Help. So there are different variations of that game. I'm only trying to help. So whenever you find yourself doing it, so I think Sophia was to, to commenting, maybe you're playing it with your friends. I've certainly had done it. Like I'm definitely not immune to playing, uh, to had been in those situations at all. So I can tell you from my side, yes, totally possible. Yes, you do feel frustrated. Yes, you do feel uh, kind of weird satisfaction when when something did not work, like it's, it's like it's totally happening. And uh, if you specifically, you can catch yourself say that, maybe even out loud, I'm only trying to help. I'm only trying to help. Variations of that games are, uh, of that game is, um, uh, do this, but when you give somebody a, a solution, do this, and they will say, yes, but. <laughs> so they will always have an excuse that that, solution is not working or it shouldn't be working. So what's at the basis of this? What's the uh, why? Why people do that? So it's because coaches like being in the parent. They like taking part of a parent and play a parent with the uh, clients. And what they're really trying to say is that I can make you grateful for my help. So what they're looking for, what the ego, I would say, is looking for is that, oh, I am right. I am, um, I'm, I will make you grateful for my help. I can, I can help, I am useful, and you should be acknowledging this. And the client then is playing a, a part of a child. And, which, and the child is a naughty child. The child says, well, go ahead and try. <laughs> so it's the child is not rebelling straight away. It's like, no, you're useless. But they kind of playing the game with you. So they let you give suggestions. They let you give solutions. But it's not working. It's not working. It's not working. <laughs> so um, when I was thinking about a lot of the uh, my, my wannabe clients, actually, I, I typically try not to take those clients on. In fact, I just actually just recently said no to one of those wannabes um it when they were saying i i would like to work with you because all of the coaches like 10 coaches and, and six figure investment uh that i've made none of them could help me and i told this client i said uh, the prospect it's not a it's, it's a wannabe client and i said listen i don't think i can help you because I can see that you're going to invest again because that's your habit. That's what you do. You invest, but you're not getting results. And I just don't want to be that coach who's going to be sitting there and saying, oh, I didn't get any results with you because that, that's it. I don't just don't want to be that coach. And um, yes, there, there was a, obviously the game stopped at this point. And what you would expect when the game is interrupted is frustration, right? So this is why often people don't want to interrupt the game. You don't want to interrupt your own game or your client's game. And your client doesn't want to interrupt you because if you're not giving this, each other that kind of dark satisfaction, people start feeling kind of irritated and, and frustrated with each other because, oh, the game is not played, right? And we're gonna go deeper and talk about like why, what is, what's in it, why people are so obsessed with playing the game or having those wins or, or disappointments or feeling that all people are ungrateful or um, no, you can't help me, whatever, whatever, whichever side you are, right? Uh, so you will, you will understand why it's happening. But let's right, right now, let's look at the archetypes. So the archetypes is coach is playing a martyr. It's basically a martyr syndrome, which is like so familiar to myself and mo most people I work with who are like big givers, big helpers. They sacrifice everything to just do, do this work and <laughs> whatever, right? And I mean, I could, like I'm smiling because I remember so many people I speak with. I attract a lot of people like that. And I'm a, most surely I've been brought up to be a martyr. Like I can 
definitely tell you that. And what is the darker side of the martyr is that what martyr is really looking for is to confirm that belief that people are ungrateful. And even the darker side of that is that you can't trust anybody. So this is why, why in my programs, like when I work with you guys, I pay so much attention to intimacy issues because I understand that until you actually love people or trust, because that's <laughs> trust people, it comes before you love people, is, is so important because otherwise you will be in fact subconsciously proving that no, you can't trust anybody. And yes, people are ungrateful. And they, yes, they do disappoint. And that's the, that's the game. That's the game of a martyr. Poor, poor me. I'm trying so hard. I'm only trying to help. And, and I just can't. This world is just ungrateful. And people are like, not good at all. Now, so the dark, in the very dark in the game of a martyr is I am useless. I am inadequate. I'm not good enough. I also call it, it's not Eric Byrne, it's just my interpretation at this point, is path of the abused and the abandoned that I talked about. This is a dark side of running a business. It's when you are coming in with your rightfulness uh, and you just uh, suffer through your life, have this, you think it's a gift, it's I call it a coping skill, and you're coming with this to your clients and to the world and you try to enlighten everybody because you suffered so much and you learned it, you're sacrificing yourself and you're just enlightening those people who will never get this, right? So that's the idea. And why is it part of the abused and abandoned? Because part of the abused and abandoned is leading to, you know, it, it's it's the part that is keeps giving, right? If you if you perceive yourself as I am the one who is abused, so therefore I, I you will be keep getting abused. Or if you abandoned, you will find you will live your life and find evidence that, yes, I am abandoned. Yes, I am rejected. Like, it's happening all the time. I mean, guys, you know with people you work with. I certainly see it all the time with people I work with. It happens all the time. People really confirm that statement, right? It's it's the path. That's why you need to get off the path. It's so important you stop that path of the abused and the abandoned because otherwise you all your uh, efforts are really are uh, about confirming that, that yes, you can't trust anybody, people are ungrateful, they are aggressive, the, the blah, 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 whatever, they abuse us and they will abandon you, right? So, on the, on the side of a client, if you're attracting clients from this martyr archetype that you live, and client is saying, <clears throat> I will make you feel inadequate. It's the child, so client becomes a child who gives a masochistic parent what they want. Now, which is the feeling of rightfulness and disappointment. Guys, I mean, I have five kids, I can tell you. Kids deliver you exactly what you want. Do you want to feel abandoned? Oh, they will deliver you abandonment. Do you want to feel abused? There you are, feel abused, right? Like whatever you want. If you you can see what, uh, because kids are innately trained, I mean, that's in the whole nature, is to serve the parents. So it comes from a parent. The game comes from you guys. So if you coach who is always disappointed and not getting results for clients, you can think that, oh my gosh, it's I am the problem. It's not the client who is the problem. So you are the problem. Because it is your your, uh, because as soon as you are, it's, it's called invitation to play a game. So when you're signing your new client, you already tell them that, guess what, with me, you will have to fail. With me, you will have to sabotage yourself. And that is, it's a dangerous game, right? For uh, And clients, guess what, they regress. If, they, if that's the game that they play, they're looking for a parent in their life, the savior, the parent, somebody to sort them out, somebody to punish them, somebody to approve them or whatever, whatever the pattern is. So they're looking for that parent and they caught up in your game. So they will deliver you what you want. And what is it that you want is rightfulness and disappointment. Rightfulness, I've tried so hard, it's not working. And uh, disappointment, oh, you didn't do it again. 
right? So that's great. So that's the game. Your child delivers it. The client delivers it. Why you get clients like that? What is in the... Why they are doing this? Right? What, what, what's in it? What's, what makes them do that? Well, number one, it's a, it's a learned pattern. They learned it from their own families, from their own parents. Obviously, their parents had that pattern and they've been delivering disappointment and failures to their parents. So their parents would feel that kind of rightfulness and disappointment. And it's just a pattern. It's just running. So when they find, when they're looking for a coach, they're looking for somebody who can be, who is looking to be disappointed. So they just get to that client, uh, to that coach, right? Uh, reactive behavior. Reactive behavior, which is if you meet the, which you guys have seen many times as well, like I've seen it a lot with couples as well. When you get a kind of seemingly, or let's say innocent client, you just a person who just really genuinely looking for results. But because you making that invitation to sabotage themselves, they are start, they are just reacting to you and they will play the game. They will play the game. They will start sabotaging. Um, so they also, why else? Why? Because also the client might be playing out their own script or part of the abused and they're abandoned. <laughs> That's also, of course, is happening, right? They also want to feel disappointed. They also feel, want to feel rightfulness. Uh, you know, you can't trust anybody. You can't trust the coach. Everybody's ripping me off. Coaches are bad. Da da blah. And that's what, especially when you hear that, you want to listen to that when with your prospects. And and if you hear that, like I mean, what I do, I just say no, right? I I don't want to be I don't want to be one of those coaches who's gonna be abused and and abandon you, right? So I'm not playing that game with you. And I will give you some ways out at the end. And one of them is about confrontation. It's about confronting that game at the, right at the beginning. If Because if you get client like that, so you, you might as coach also buy into it. And then you will be just always trying to help, but not really helping. So what else? I'm, I'm reading from my notes here. And what is the, what is client like that? What do they want to reinforce? That I am bad, I am, um, I will disappoint you. They have a guilt pattern going. It's called also an alcoholic game. It's here, it's the game, you can read about alcoholic game, which is a, it's a, it's not about uh, having fun, but it is about hangover. It's more about the suffering that happens after the party. So that's the alcoholic game. It's always being miserable and hating yourself and seeing and saying I'm unworthy. I am guilty of this. I am a miserable. I am wrong. And that is like a, that's a dark side, guys. What we're talking about here is the shadow side, but it's it's unfortunately it can be totally present with your clients. So if you see that um, you know your your client is actually driven to fail. You you might want to take notes and see whether you're going to take client on like this or not. Or can you change the pattern at the very beginning and the, the dynamic? And there's a specific phrases you can say to to get out of it, which we're going to try. I mean, I will tell you. Now, symptoms. What are the symptoms of uh, of the game is being played? So, number the, the good way when the, when there's no game, but it's just you're genuinely... Being a coach, you're trying to help. You're doing the what you need to be doing, which is uh, clients start implementing and feels better, right? So that's a good one. Now, another one is clients client implements, but still is complaining that it's not helping. So they're implementing what you prescribed them to do. It might be helping, but they're not gonna tell you. So they're just going to kind of keep it secret and say it's not working because what you want, you don't really want your clients to get results. So you, you kind of just giving them orders and you're not really looking, is it working or not? And your client is that might be getting results or not, but what they're telling you is what you want to hear, which is it's not working. It's not working, right? It's not helping. I'm not getting any better. So 
and what what your game as a coach is like is oh yeah like people can't be trusted uh i'm useless it's it the the, the world is disappointing it's gr good so you feel good about this whole game right and another one men uh, uh client kind of casually mentions that they actually forgot to carry out the instructions and they are not implementing <laughs> so so this is also like it this is like a like you know so you as a coach could be hoping and thinking your client is doing something there and then a client kind of just like casually but of course really strategically places that statement which is oh actually i forgot to do this thing well actually i didn't do it uh yeah it's not really working okay so that is that, that's a, it's a kind of like a passive aggressive <laughs> version of of just saying well it's not working right so those are the symptoms when you see that you're like okay i think i'm being played here or oh my gosh i am playing this game perfect so let's see what you can do about this prevention uh guys well when i'm gonna say a reality check you're gonna say oh my gosh reality check well that's because i'm ending your game guys reality check you need this is why when i'm helping you to create your programs i am making sure you can guarantee results like what is working it's actually very very important which is your cool reality check are you actually adequate does this tool actually work it's really really important because otherwise you'll be playing the game of be of feeling inadequate and you will create your whole program that will serve you to feel oh my gosh i'm doing the work but it's not working people are just useless they oh i'm useless and people are useless no you can't trust anybody so you see how it works so you have to prevent yourself from sabotaging your own self which is to make sure that everything in your program is actually delivering those results therefore when you're offering somebody a solution you know 100 percent it's going to work that is why you're offering it okay that is why it's why we're doing what we're doing guys which is like really looking at everything in your program so now you can you can like see yourself right now like like i mean I, I see it all the time when i'm looking at people's programs and how they're creating those steps and theories and it's like well if you just created a theory because you had this good idea you're literally playing that game i'm only trying to help i'm only thinking up some thinking up some different ways of of playing the game i'm only trying to help right but it's actually not working so you need to be able to face that reality and then just get rid of that tool guys like that's my advice to you find something that is working when you give it to your clients and that will prevent you from this um cycle of suggesting things that actually don't work number two is uh ask a client what do you think you should do what do you think you should do right you've seen me do that all like like many many times it's totally i find that it's the best way especially with you know clients who really you know they feel they think they have this rightfulness i've done it all i've tried it all i'm so, like you know there's another variation of it i'm so messed up nothing can help me like nothing you can suggest would ever help me right so the the way out is to say so what do you think would help you because um deep down that client that child in within the client wants to wants to become a parent and wants to say, wants to teach you and say "Ooh, but i know better than you so let them shine let them give the solution to themselves that's another that's that's a good version as well of this now another one uh th this is a prevention from this book actually which i wrote down because i've said it so many times to you guys and i want to say that it's not just me it's in this book as well which is um when you have a sales conversation perhaps i mean that's a very good time when you can bring those things in which is have those three phrases ready number one i think we can do something about it 
I think we can do something about it. Second phrase. I know what to do. I know what to do. And the third one. Oh no, the, the, there's a four of them. The third one. I was assigned to help you. I, or you can say, I am assigned to help you. And number three, number four is, my fee for helping you is. My fee for helping you is. This is why, like, we're talking about charging. That, that's why it's so important. Because then it becomes, instead of that game, what it becomes, adult offers to put professional qualifications in disposal of a distressed client and that is what what is actually required right everything else is a game now if you coming up with with your real professional tested fantastic great solutions to the problem that is real Right? It's not invented, it's the real, like that's why we're talking about diagnosing the pro obviously the, pro the problem accurately. So if you diagnose that problem and you have capacity to solve it, and this is what you're doing, right? It's the, it's the transaction, which is you're paid to give somebody a productive solution to uh, solve a real problem. Okay, so this is when it's not a game, it's totally normal. This is what the this is what the contract, coaching contract should be all about. You see? You see how different it is from what we often are doing with our friends when we feel frustrated that we've done this all this advice and and, and never nothing ever changed, right? And believe me, I've been there myself, so I know exactly what it feels like. It's you feel like a douchebag, right? But you're also getting that satisfaction, like that's the darker side, that's our shadow, it's totally like, yeah, I knew it, I knew you can't trust anybody, you, I, or worst one, I knew I'm useless, I know I'm not good enough, I know, uh, you know, I'm abused and abandoned and that's who I am, I'm like, oh, right, <laughs> so you got what you wanted, you feel bad about yourself, <laughs> fantastic, right, so that is like, but that's played out, and now the good one is, Okay, this is a real problem, and I, ha I have a real solution for you, okay? I have a real solution for you, which I'm qualified to give you, okay? So that's a good one, and obviously you charge for it, that's fantastic. Now, so the game is when a parent proves that people are ungrateful and disappointing in the invitation to sabotage, right? That's the game, that's the opposite of what we just talked about. So the way out is number one, confrontation. So that's, I've mentioned that. If your client have a history of failing with other coaches, call them out and brainstorm a possible different responses so your client can get results, right? I totally uh, propose that. Uh, I've done it with you, whoever I worked with, which is often I, I ask my new client, I say, what's your sabotaging pattern, right? I mean, with you, all of you, we sit, analyze it specifically. And then I say, is it okay for me to call you out on it when you're doing it? Right? So you have to say yes. Right? <laughs> you tell me how you sabotage yourself. So now I know, I know your tendencies. So now I have right to call you out and stop the game immediately. Right? And if you've done it at the beginning of your coaching um, arrangement with your client that's fantastic because you kind of gotten their permission to intervene and also uh, for yourself I mean this is what you need to be doing is that reality check you need to be seeing what are the, what the results are number two way out is <clears throat> I'm your coach not a parent you're trying to prove wrong, right? Every time you see that if you suggest something to a client and your client is either had not implemented or forgot to tell you that they forgot to do it and then they... Me, 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 me. So you tell them, listen, I am your coach, I'm not your parent. 
because the t why because the tendency of a child is to prove the parent wrong right to tell them that no you can't help me you the world is disappointing i will disappoint you i will rebel against you i will show you you are inadequate right because that's what parents want but at the same time, that's the child's game all the time anyway. It's like, I'm going to not give you what you, you, know, you say you want. And um, so you want to just immediately say, like, I am not going to be that. You don't have to rebel against me. I'm not the parent. You have to rebel against that. Like, that's not... <laughs> That's not what we're doing here, right? So that's a good a good way out. Like I can still totally see how that could be done nicely and easily and really prevent you from going that spiral. Uh, client plays a game of rejection, not collecting the solutions, but rejecting them. So then you ask a client, did anyone suggest anything you haven't thought of yourself? Right? You cannot always... I would even suggest to do that, obviously, which I teach you at uh, in your marketing, in your sales. Remember I told you, you ask people what they had already done. Before you start suggesting do this, do that, ask them what they had already done. And they will tell you, oh, I've done this and that didn't work. I've done that and that didn't work. Da, 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 da. And you say, um, and then you say, okay, did anyone ever suggested anything that you haven't thought of? So it's going to put them into this perspective that, oh, guess what? I had been playing that game with my coaches all the time. Like, I guys, I see it all the time. When you hire a coach only to learn what you already know. But it's not it's not the coach's fault. It's the, It's the client's fault at this point. It's because, well... Yeah, that's the game. I am nobody can teach me. You can try, but you're gonna fail, right? That's the game of a client. So you want to prevent that immediately and ask them, what is the solution? And then you can say, well, we can brainstorm some other possible variations of of what could help, right? Uh, and, and ask what suggestion you will not reject. Right? That's another one. Like, what suggestion you will not reject? Which is, for example, do this. Oh, I already tried that. It didn't work. Okay. Well, da, da. So, which suggestion you will not reject? So, it will put your client into, like, a thinking mode. Which is, for the first time, they might start reflecting on this pattern that they have. Now, what um, Eric Burns suggests that when you do that, you give, a, he says basically that that is the therapy because he's a therapist. So he talks about therapy. So he talks about that give client then the whole program to just answer that question. What suggestion you will not reject and let them actually write it down. Right. Really examine that because this is when the, for the, they, that's how they will heal. Because it's like, oh, wait a sec, wait a sec, what, what, is, what is going on? So, so I want you to um, reflect on that question yourself. If you're a client, think about yourself and say, ask yourself, what suggestion I will not reject? And just sit with it, guys. Like, I, I, I even, when, when I ask myself, I immediately felt that it's like brain is frying there. Because it's like, it interrupts the pattern. I think it's brilliant. So, uh, again, so I'm going to repeat. So, pattern of a coach and the client keeping busy to feel inadequate. Oh, sorry, to feel adequate. But also, why is it also this game is played? Is because both client and the coach believe that keeping busy is something they need to do. <laughs> it's the belief about hard work. You have to work hard, right? Also, like, it's it's like... You, you you can recognize yourself, right? As soon as I'm doing something, I'm all right. I'm, I'm good. I'm good if I'm doing something. So both coach and the client believe that and therefore they uh, like basically waste time by trying all different, different freaking things. <laughs> Until, and none of them, like in the worst case scenario, none of them are working. <laughs> That's really bad. And this is why, like, what, what, when I'm, most of the time, what I'm teaching you guys, it's like this two-hour work day. 
like most people are shocked. Like some of you, like Sophia, right? You told me. I mean, plenty of my clients who had done it and they told me, I cannot imagine that I could not believe that I could do all this work for my business in two hours per day. Two hours per day. It's going from working sometimes 14, 16 hours per day. Like I had clients who told me that that's how long they worked. Like, like 90 hours per week, like some crazy hours. Can't even imagine. But they would, that's what they believed they had to do. So they were doing all of those things, like some other coach would tell them, I'm only trying to help, so why don't you try funnels? Or I'm only trying to help, why don't you try networking, coffee dates, and do, you know, 300 of them <laughs> per week. <laughs> Go to all of them, or whatever. Like, do this, do that, like... Like, do free challenges, do the blah, blah, blah. So by the time you kind of done it all, you what you're getting is satisfaction. You're getting this, yes, work, life is hard. I am useless. Like, nothing's working. Whew. Yes, I can relax now. This is what I've done my work for today, right? So if you get client and the coach like that, it, that that's and those are the, a lot of the programs, business programs, I, like I've seen, uh, catering to that kind of mentality, right? It's a, it's a pattern. So it's an unfortunate pattern and everybody's playing the game. And what you want to understand is that it's not going to work, right? Because the whole idea behind it, the emotional, the dark, uh, the, the, the victory of that game is to fail, right? So you definitely need to get out of it. And why is it all happening? It's like because what you what behind it all is that, um, like I said, the victim, the the abused and the abandoned, right? It's the I am wrong syndrome. Like I'm a failure. So that's what you're really driving. So that's what you actually need to heal. So um, Eric Byrne doesn't talk much about that, but what I'm really because he talks about just using willpower take a different perspective on to becoming an adult and really checking with yourself. I agree with that, absolutely. Having the reality check, which is, uh, as a coach, you want to look at your program and get rid of all of the fluff in your program. Like, make sure that every freaking five minutes you spend with your client are driven to get that result. And you know that whatever you are doing is getting results. Not playing the game, not wasting time, not keeping busy, not uh, doing something that they will reject at the end, right? But it is something that will like totally get results. And um, you will see that your sessions then become shorter. Your sessions become, because you don't need to prove anything, right? You're not playing the game. You're not trying to keep busy. You're just trying to get results. You're getting, not trying, you're getting results. And your client's job is then to take the tool implement it fully with uh, agenda to actually get better. So in uh, what comes to um, at the core of you having a great client is that your client have to commit to getting better. Your client have to commit to get better and they have to commit it in their heart. So and this is how like I mean how are you going to do this? You're going to, when you are, th that's what like I typically do when I'm looking at my clients, like, and I had those invitations from people who would say they want help, like literally look me in the eye and say, I don't care how much it is, just, just take me as a client. I will, and then immediately the next thing <laughs> you will do is then you will see that, oh my gosh, they are not taking your advice. They are not doing what you just told them to do. So so you want to maybe test them. That's one of the things is that when somebody comes with this, like, oh, I'm just, I need help, just help me. You want to give them a kind of a small assignment that is going to take effort on their uh, behalf and make sure and to see then are they following through. And if they followed through, that means, yeah, they are totally, they invested. They really want results, right? Specifically, if they've gotten results with you, like I mean, those tiny little thing you gave them and they're like, oh my gosh, I feel better because I used this tool. This is an indication that it's a genuine client who really wants to get better. And yes, this is somebody great 
it's a great potential for you now to start getting results. Of course, if you're not going to sabotage yourself. And for you not to sabotage yourself and get out of that game, you want to do healing on your wounds, guys. It's just get out of that I am abused and abandoned pattern. And how is it done? With many of my clients, obviously, who had been doing healing with me, what are we doing there, right? We, we understand that uh, avoiding the subject is not going to help. So feeling, what is it? Healing through feeling. If you guys at the very basis of, uh, you can read in here, healing through feeling, meaning you actually have to feel, unfortunately, the pain that you had been repressing, right? And uh, cry it out, guys. I mean, tap it out, do what you need to do to release it. Use my, obviously, my, you know, 20 pound, release 20 pounds of pain process, like whatever helps you to have it to look at it and say yes it happened and now I'm I worked with it and now I'm completed and I'm finished and now I can get on with my life this is when you are expected now to not to sabotage your freaking clients and not to sabotage yourself in getting results for your clients because uh, all of us have those parts that uh, at the same time want all different things. So it's called conflicted. <laughs> conflicted in a situation, right, is when one part of you wants to have results and, and, and is a sane adult and, and is a good person in the sense that, yes, you do actually want to make an impact and etc. And then you have that inside that other part that is going to try to sabotage and that is the, the ego part right the part of the abuse and the abandon so you need to be either be able to switch and i would always recommend heal the uh, ego parallel to uh, using willpower to stay in your in your empowered sane adult self where you actually have a reality check have the real tools uh, keeping people accountable, keeping yourself accountable. So all of that is a good stuff. So, okay, so I'm going to finish for today. Uh, and I will actually post this those notes that I've been using today. I have uh, recommend to read uh, this book. I also posted some uh, resource uh, free uh, website with all the... Partially with games. So what they have, they have the description of the game but solutions are in the book so you actually have to get the book to know what to do about this but i pretty much told you what i've read right there's a lot of different games so um i'm gonna say yes i'm gonna say book is complicated it's not an easy read but if you are into it i think it's worth for you to to really get into the um, understanding of the darker side unfortunate darker side of our psyche and self-sabotage since you're working since you're coach you're gonna be faced with that all the time guys like it's not, it's you can't avoid the the subject of sabotage so so i recommend you of course do your uh, further learning and reading and ask me questions if you have in the comments and i will specify some other things okay lots of love guys and see you later